phonetic line. Okay? That's, that's an amazing thing. That is an amazing thing. <laughs> okay? So, now let's talk about the Lyrans, and then we'll talk about humans some more. Okay? Um, okay, we'll talk about the Lyrans. Their skin color is amber, blue, and or red. The color of the stars in their planetary systems is what caused their skin, skin tint to change. Okay, depending upon the frequency and the UV ultraviolet scale of their stars. Okay. Um, they're mammalian of mammal mammalian descent. Okay. Um, they are the only. They are the only human race. To have full empathy senses and full sonic, bisonic abilities and have experienced quantum probability control. I'm still working on that. Okay? Well, you understand these are extraterrestrials who know what this all means, okay? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll read it again. They were the only human beings to have full empathy sense, full sonic abilities, P-S-I-O-N-I-C, and have experienced quantum probability control. Okay. They are also considered today a retired race that has very little intercourse with other main civilizations. In the past, on Earth, <clears throat> they were known That's what they were known as. Oh, I'm sorry. Bada Savita. It's B O D B O D H I S A T T V A. Yep. Ta da. <laughs> The lights go off. That's great. You know, that's great. Okay. They have been known to monitor and provide guidance for some planetary systems. Some planetary systems today see them as their protectors and guides. They're worshipped, in other words. What's interesting is that the Lyrans prefer to live on ringed worlds. They just have a preference for living on ringed worlds. And on the Andromedan Council, they are known as an elder race, which carries great prestige on the Council. Because... Extraterrestrial civilizations, ladies and gentlemen, um, really pay close attention to genetic lineage. Okay? Now we're going to talk about the human race as a whole, the Andromedan, how the Andromedans see the human race. Okay? I'm doing this for the people at home so that they can all write this down. Okay. Some of this will be a little bit familiar because I've touched on it, but we're going to talk about it again. The human race is unusual in having all of its member races derive from one genetic line. 
This accounts for the remarkable causable interactions, casual interactions, of the great human civilizations. But for better or for worse, human galactic civilizations, even if they compose a single clan, has, have diverse evolutionary histories. Okay? Each culture is very different in the way that they've evolved. Okay? Not as a species, but as a culture. Okay? I want to be specific to that. And misunderstandings and conflicts have occurred. Traditions exist to minimize the likelihood of misunderstandings and to lessen the negative consequences of any miscommunications that might occur. So they put in place, they were sentient enough to know that they needed to put things in place to try to minimize human versus human war. Okay? <clears throat> it, <laughs> well, not on this planet. No, it didn't. You know, and, and I think they're still working on it. Okay? In addition, the behavior of individuals does reflect on the species and the clan. Okay, now this is an Andromedan race, an Andromedan human race, sharing this with us, okay? That individuals, the actions of individuals of those races, does reflect on the entire clan, okay? None are faulted for polite or proper behavior. Informality is always at risk of being misconstrued or miscommunicated. The traditions of human interaction were developed by the ancestors over the ages when an elder race insists that a new civilization observe traditions. Okay, an example. The Andromedans come down, they introduce themselves, they say, okay boys, it's time to go to the show. Okay, it's time to go to the show. What happens? is in the show being the Andromedan Council. We are being asked to be invited to the Andromedan Council. What they will do is they will teach us the tradition, the proper way of introducing yourself, of acting before all these other civilizations. Because you will be misinterpreted if you walk in, hey, oh man, what's happening? You know, it'd be completely misunderstood, okay? <laughs> Yo, blood, what's up? <laughs> when it, okay. Um, that a young civilization observe traditions. It helps the young races build a culture that will function well in galactic civilization, as well as help guarantee that this young race will become a virtuous, and productive member of the galactic commonwealth. That's exactly Mornay's verbiage. I took it word for word. The galactic commonwealth. Okay? It is important that all humans be as polite as possible. This helps both the young and the old cultures because many old are socio-biologically dependent on ritual. They have become so conditioned that this is just the way you do it. And they, their civilizations, their traditions are so deeply embedded that they're not going to change. Okay? We have that same situation here on our planet. We do. And can be psychologically disturbed by informal and rude behavior. That's what he says. If the occasion calls for it, Apologize, and then speak only when spoken to. <laughs> Never touch a fellow elder race person unless you are specifically asked to. Now, that leads me to something that I was taught, um, which I did when I was brought on board, and I met other races. And this is what the Andromedans do when they meet another race, okay? Um, and I was taught to teach this to everyone here, which I've done, so I'm going to do it again. When you, stand, when you have a contact and you're standing before an extraterrestrial or extraterrestrials, 